So a lot of tips and tricks in this video right after the intro. What's going on YouTube? My name is Mo, a car photographer from Bahrain. If it's your first time around this channel and you'd like to learn all about car photography and Photoshop, go ahead and subscribe now so you don't miss out on all the cool stuff that I create every week. All right, right, right. So all the cool stuff is right here. But before I start, I'd like to hear from you. Where are you guys from? Leave me a comment in the comment section below. Let me know where you guys from. I'm really eager to know. All right, so here's a dive into Photoshop. Let me show you the layers that we will be working with. So I have this as a base layer. Oh, let's roll back, let's roll back. This was a part of a, uh, well, not really an outdoor campaign, but a social media campaign in which I already have hired like two, three photographers to uh, come up with a Ramadan theme. Um, and I thought that this location, because everyone is asking me about location, this location, uh, felt like it's very, you know, Arabic, very traditional, and it would fit Ramadan, right? Okay, oh, okay, we're done with the background. All right, moving forward. So this is the base layer that I've uh, used for this photo. And as you can tell, I've had the CPL filter because I cut down most of the reflections down here, right? Now I do have another three layers. Let me just walk you through them quickly. This is the next layer and it's just exactly what the previous layer was, but I had the exposure um, bumped up high. The reason why I did this is just to copy these highlights here, there, here. And it was a very cloudy day, by the way, and that's why you would feel that the lighting is very even. And that sometimes is a good thing, but also it's a bad thing. Bad in a way, um, it would give you just an even lighting everywhere. It just becomes very flat photo. And you start, you know, looking at it, it was like, okay, there's something wrong with it, but I'm not sure what it is. And um, that's why I created uh, just that exposure so I can like copy and paste from or just mask in and out items from. All right. And the next one was actually just for the wheels. Um, if you look down here, I rotated the CPL. Now, why did I rotate the CPL here? I needed a bit of reflection on the wheels. Otherwise, they'll be just black, boring, nothing in there. This way, I would have a reflection on the wheels and this way it pops out the details, right? Now, there's something wrong with this photo. If you notice here, I forgot one of my soft boxes right here and I didn't notice it during the shoot. That's something that you shouldn't do, obviously. But anyway, I had a solution. I'll show it to you in a bit. And the last layer is just another normal layer. Uh, I've just used it just to bring in some of the ambient light. All right, so let me enable the masks. Um, let's have a look at the first one. So this is the before, this is the after. Uh, like I said, I just brought in some of the highlights on the car. And I brought in some of the highlights here so it doesn't become a really flat, boring photo, right? And the next one were for the rims, like I said, as you can see, I brought in back the highlights on the rims and that looks way, or the wheels, and it looks way better. All right, so the last one, I just brought in more of the reflections on the window and um, more of the lights down here because I felt like it was getting just too boring. And if you notice at the back here, I did not use the CPL and I actually wanted a reflection of one of the palm trees. Now I know it's very subjective, but I thought I would try having an actual reflection with the palm tree since we are in a place with a lot of palm trees. But I'm going to show you how to remove reflections as well towards the end of the video, so uh, don't sleep yet. But now if you're not familiar with CPL, I've made a lot of videos about the use of a circular polarizing filter and I'll leave a link to uh, one of the videos in the description below. Make sure to check it out. All right, so moving uh, forward, I added a curves to dim out a bit of the reflection, just didn't want too much. And I just added a curve just to bring it down. I know I could have used the um, maybe opacity, but yeah, I just, I'd love, I love to control things with the curves. Moving onward, I created a dodge and burn layer. Um, if you look closely right here uh, on the wheels and the highlights, I've uh, dodged around and I've burned 
uh, a bit in here. And I actually, if you look closely to the palm trees, even the palm trees got a bit of dodging and burning going on there. How cool is that, huh? All right, on the next layer, I added a bit of contrast and I did this, by the way, I did this with the uh, camera raw filter. You've seen that many times on many of my videos. I just open up the camera raw filter, add a bit of contrast through clarity slider, or maybe just play around with the whites and the black slider. And that adds more of a contrast. I've set the opacity at 73% to control the total um, contrast in the photo. And next, I discovered that, you know, I still needed to add more of a dodge and burn on the wheels, especially. So I created another dodge and burn layer and I just added more of the highlights on the wheels. All right, here's a nice trick. If you look at the next layer, you might not notice it, but let me, let me pull this from 72% to 100%. And I've added a mask. Um, I masked out the car basically and I left everything else. But if you look closely, I used the oil paint um, filter. All right, let me turn this on and off. This is before and this is the after. I don't know if you see it. You can see it here. Let's, let's do that before and after. So I added this oil effect just to give it that um, cleanness look, like painterly look. Um, in Photoshop and I've dialed it down to about 70% so it's not too much of an obvious and I added a mask to um, basically mask out the car but I also kept the wheels and the rims and that's why they look really good now I don't know if that's something that you guys will be interested in but it's a nice trick to give that clean look of the photo maybe 70% is just too much you can dial it down further and 40 or 50 and play around with it. You guys go ahead and experiment with it. You can find the filter down uh, in, under the stylize. So stylize oil paint and just experiment with it. All right, so moving onwards, I uh, removed that pro photo thing here that was just bothering me. I forgot my softbox at the back and I forgot to remove it. The reflection was so strong that I did not even notice it. So I just um, cloned it out, um, the photo right there, and that was just fine. Now this is something that I added afterwards. So it wasn't there in the final look when I submitted the photo to Addy. I added it afterwards. Uh, exp it was a very experimental thing that I did, and I just wanted to show it to you. So it's a very basic thing. It's a lamp. There you go. I've got the shadows below it. And then I added the lamp, and then I added a bit of light, um, a bit of a hue and saturation, not too much, just to uh, control that. Let me see what I've done actually. Yeah, just desaturated it a bit. And um, uh, on the next layer, I just added a bit of spill over, so um, you can see that as if the lamp was turned on and it, the light spill was spilling over the palm trees and the surroundings. Yep. Now here's the uh, now here's the nice cool trick. Remember, I told you I'm going to show you how I remove reflection, and I just did this right now, just for a minute. Yes, and it's a sloppy job. Now I've heard, now I heard a lot of things uh, about a guy complaining about us, you know, being very sloppy with our work, um, especially when we're doing tutorials. Honestly, paddle. Um, we are dedicating our time it's not even our job just to share the knowledge and uh, you should be more appreciative than very i don't know sarcastic i guess is the word but anyway yeah i'm sloppy when it comes to this because i don't want the video to go long and on and on and on so and i'm pretty sure the other guys does that too so all right, so let me turn this one off. I'll just create a new layer and I'm going to create one of my sloppy uh, layers uh, selection. And I'm going to quickly select around this area. Now there are a lot of video tutorials showing you how to use the pen tool. So I don't need to um, go through this with you guys, right? Right. 
make a selection around this. I'm just going to do it quickly. Sloppy as hell. Cause I like it sloppy. All right, now just for, for, for the sake of the time, right now we're just going to do this selection quickly. All right, I'm going to make a selection, 0.5 of a selection. I'm going to grab a brush. Let's see, I'm, I'm going to sample uh, from down here, just anywhere here. Let's say here, we're on 25%. I think it's fine. It's 25%, 100%, that doesn't really matter. I'm just going to, let me just use the pen. That's easier, right? Oh yeah, and ignore this by here, because like I said, it's just to show you how it's done. I'm just being sloppy on purpose. Okay, so I made a selection and uh, it looks horrendous. There's no way a car part will look like this. So we need to add a gradient uh, to um, break this kind of a look. I don't know if that makes any sense. And I'm just going to make a selection anywhere from here. I'm just going to drag to create that gradient. Oops, I think I did it too much. Let's add that back here. I think that looks a bit better. Let's add more. Yeah, this way. I think we're good. All right, let's deselect. Let's look at it. Now it looks a bit digital. There is no noise. Let's add noise to it. And by the way, I'm just showing you this part here. You can do it on the entire car or you can select some parts. But uh, just for the sake of this video, I'm going to do this part only. And I'm going to add a noise, just one. All right, so, so far so good. Now if we uh, just zoom out and have a look at it, now it looks really good. And it looks like we've done some paint job <laughs> because um, cause I've, I've left these um, reflections down here. Now, if we would have done, if we would have removed the reflections here the same way, this should be, this should be brighter because uh, of the angle uh, of this object is facing towards or, or upwards. And that's why we'll get more of light. And that's why it's going to be brighter. At least you give it that kind of a contrast between these parts. Capiche. I think I hope that makes sense. But anyway, let's say that, you know, we want to start fading this out. We can add a mask to make it more real. And uh, with 25% is fine. We're just going to start masking. Oops, that's a lot. That's a lot. No, that's a lot and a lot. Start that down. All right, let's add a mask again. Let's add that mask again. And um, let's do it again. I'm just going to slightly mask it out like so. So the original pain and reflections comes out and that will be more realistic when you look at it from a distance like this. Kind of, I think I've, I've, I've removed too much. But yeah, I guess you get the point on how I remove reflections. I do it this way. All right, moving onwards, I added a vignette using a curves and that's one of the ways that I add vignettes. I create a curve and then I, yes, use the mask to um, uh, mask out the car from the vignette. So this is the before and this is the after. And then I added a channel mixer and that desaturated the photos. I removed the car from it. I masked out the car is more of an appropriate term. Um, I, if you've been following me along, I always use the uh, channel mixer to desaturate a photo the way I want it to be desaturated. I've set it to 23%. And uh, yeah, experiment with it. If you have any question about it, just let me know in the comment section below. I feel like I've deleted one of the, f one of the layers. But anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why in a bit. Because I don't think this is the final one. But I added a color lookup. If you, uh, if you watched my previous color lookup tutorial on YouTube, um, I explained how to get that free pack from Lotify, I think, .me. Have a look at it. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Make sure to check it out. Now, here's what, I'm, here's what I think I've missed because I remember removing these objects down here. 
and the objects over there uh, to uh, yeah cleaning up the photo I didn't leave these in I'm pretty sure I've removed it well, perhaps I'm looking at another version but anyway you already have know how to use the clone snap tool to remove such objects but also if you have any questions please let me know all right YouTube we've reached the end of this tutorial um, once again uh, if you have any questions please leave me a comment in the comment section below don't forget to subscribe to this awesome channel and follow me on Instagram and I'll see you in the next video